1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Since it is Veterans Day, I thought that we would do a Veterans Day themed Chaplain's Report. So we will not be continuing our series in First Samuel, at least for today. We're taking a brief hiatus from that. But when I thought about Veterans Day and I thought about what would I do in connection with Veterans Day, I thought really at the core of it, all Veterans Day is, is just an opportunity to say thank you. Now, it is aimed at a certain group of people. But when you boil it down to its bare bones, that's really all Veterans Day is. It is an opportunity for regular citizens to say to people that served in the military, we appreciate you, we appreciate what you did, and we'd like to take a day to honor that. And that's a really good thing. So with that in mind, I thought, what would be the best Bible story for this? Because there's a lot of stories about being grateful, and it's because I think God realizes that humans are just not that great at being grateful because we're lazy and we lack perspective, and sometimes we don't realize when we ought to be grateful. We may not realize the, you know, the magnitude of something good that is done for us, and because of that, we have a tendency to not be as grateful as we should be. So I thought just a perfect way to illustrate this is a story from Luke 17 about Jesus healing the lepers. And as he, he talking about Jesus here, and as he entered a village, ten men with leprosy who stood at a distance met him. And they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And they were going and were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. But Jesus responded and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Now, it's not lost on me the significance of the only person that thought it was important to thank Jesus for this was a Samaritan who, by the Jews, would have thought to have been the one that is the least likely to be a godly person, the person that lives apart and outside of the Jewish faith and the Jewish religion and believes things like that they should be worshiping at, at different places and that they, they don't honor the prophets, they believe that the old law is all that, that you need, they have a modified version of the Pentateuch that have actually perverted God's law. And so because of that, you would think that he would be the person that would be least likely to be grateful, and yet he's the only one that turned back and said thank you. I think that that's a pretty powerful lesson in and of itself, that we shouldn't judge people based on sort of the demographics, the, the racial makeup, the belief system, because sometimes people surprise you. And sometimes it's the people that you would be least inclined to think would be a moral person that actually shows the most gratitude. And I think that that's something that this story goes out of its way to illustrate, and it's right on that. But to give us a little bit better understanding of this passage, I think you really have to understand leprosy itself. You see, leprosy is an incredibly painful and in many cases terminal disease, but it doesn't kill you quickly. It's a skin disease that basically eats you alive slowly. And it's highly contagious, which is the reason that once you actually had leprosy, you had to live outside of society. They would go down streets. And when they would go to a marketplace to buy food or something of that nature, they had to announce the fact that they were coming in and yell out, unclean, unclean, so that no one would get close to them. This is the life that they lived. And they had to live away from their family. They had to live away from everyone out of fear that they could make them sick. And so they just lived in colonies outside of the cities. This is this is the life of a leper. And they can't, like, work with people. So what they have to do is they have to keep their distance and they just kind of have to make a living some other kind of way. And most of the time, what that meant was begging. 
not to say that they couldn't do anything else, but the fact that they're sick and very sensitive to sunlight meant that working was very, very difficult. And so most of them just kind of had to beg for a living. So you can imagine, this is a very difficult life. And Jesus just cleansed it. I mean, he just told them to go to the priest. They start walking, and before too long, all of a sudden their leprosy is just gone. I mean, can you imagine what that was like? To have this thing that you've lived with, I don't know how long any of them had been lepers, but I imagine there were at least a few of them that have been a leper for a really long time. You know, you might have been away from your family. You may not have been able to hug your children for, you know, five, ten years. Can you imagine what that's like? And then somebody just comes along and heals you and doesn't ask anything in return? I mean, that's profound. And there's only one guy that thought that was worth going back and saying thank you for? And he happens to be the one that the people of the day would have considered the least spiritual, the one that would be least likely to do that. You see, Jesus didn't just grant these people healing. I mean, yes, he did that too. But what he really granted them was freedom. They could go back home. They could live with their family. They could worship God again. You weren't allowed in the temple if you were a leper. So they're allowed to actually go back and, and give praise to God and to, to live their lives and to work again. I mean, just they have this catastrophic event hit and then all of a sudden it's just gone within the matter, a matter of minutes. And so what Jesus was actually giving them wasn't their health. It was their liberty, their ability to go back to a normal life and be with their loved ones. And yet, even despite this knowledge, there's still only one that comes back to actually say thank you. And I think that there's a powerful metaphor there for our veterans. Now, I'm not trying to deify veterans or saying that they're exactly like Jesus or anything like that. I'm not trying to do that. And I don't think that they would want me to do that, most of them. But I am saying that there is a similarity in that they are a group of people that is willing to do a lot of personal sacrifice for the sake of people that they don't know and will never say thank you. You know, that one of the things that was read earlier today in our Veterans Day program was the, the poem called The Soldier. And at the end of it, it talks about how the soldier salutes the flag, lives under the flag, is buried with the coffin draped many times with a flag. And he fights so that the person that hates the flag is allowed to burn it. And that's pretty profound. Even people that don't like veterans, even people that hate them, they are willing to sacrifice for their freedoms too. Even if they use those freedoms to do things that they don't like. Even if those people are ungrateful. And that is a Jesus-like quality. That is a quality where you put other people's needs ahead of your own. So how do we avoid being one of those nine people? Because I think we are those people far more often than we realize. I know I am. There's times where I'm not nearly grateful enough, not nearly to the level that I should be, not only to God, but to other people. So how do we avoid that? Well, I think the first big step is perspective. If we would just put things into perspective and sort of take a step back and look, then I think that that's going to, to be a, a really big help in that. And you remember what I was saying earlier about, earlier about Ibram X. Kendi? how the reason he sees racism in absolutely everything is because it's his job to look for things that are racist. And so because that's what you look for, that's what you find. What did Jesus say? Seek and ye shall find. Well, if we look for opportunities to be grateful, if we look for good things in our life and have a positive outlook, we're going to see a lot of things to th say thank you for. And so if we're constantly looking for that, then that's what we're going to find. If we're constantly looking for things to complain about or talk about how unfair things are, you know what we're going to find? An awful lot of unfairness. We're going to find an awful lot of things to gripe about. And that's something that I personally need to do a better job of. I mean, part of my job is to be analytical and talk about it when things are wrong. But it wouldn't hurt me to be a little bit more positive and to look for things that are going well. And one of the things I love about this episode, about a Veterans Day special, is I get to focus on something really good. And maybe if we did that a little bit more in our lives, instead of constantly being hooked on the outrage of you know, jumping on Twitter and yelling at our political opponents, not that they don't deserve it from time to time, and not saying that there's never a good time to do that, but I'm saying 
let's not make that a centerpiece of our life. Let's look for things to be positive about, more importantly, things to be grateful for to other people and also to God. And let's not take things for granted. You know, I was actually listening to something the other day where um, it was a book by Jonathan Hyde, and he's talking about mental distortions. And one of the most common ones is where we are negative about everything for no reason, like we refuse to accept the good. And the example that he gave is a husband that says, well, that's what wives are supposed to do. So when you're you know, when your wife says something nice or nice to you or helps with household chores or something like that, that robs a person of their gratitude. Because when you look at something and you refuse to see the good in it, then you don't see that you have a whole lot of reason to be grateful. Now, these lepers should have been able to see that considering the gift that they had been given. But I think it would help us all out if we just look for things to be grateful for because that which we seek, we are going to find. And if we're looking for opportunities to be grateful for things, then that's exactly what we're going to come to. Oh, and by the way, since Thanksgiving is coming up, and it is, maybe this is a good thing to focus on for that too. You know, take some time before Thanksgiving and just maybe come up with a list of things that you're grateful for and focus on that and meditate about that and thank God for those things. Pray about it. I think that that'll really go a long way. So I think really the goal here in the message is we want to be the person that went back, and that's because Jesus remembered the one that went back. Everybody remembers the one that went back. And so being somebody that adopts an attitude of being grateful and saying thank you and realizing the blessings that they have in their life, focusing on the things that they do have as opposed to the things that they don't have, that's a person that makes an impact. That's a person that people remember and appreciate. When you say thank you for something that someone else did, that really makes a difference in their life. Because regardless of political affiliation, religious affiliation, any of that, I don't know of a single person, culture, that doesn't appreciate gratitude. Everybody that I've ever run into really appreciates it when someone is grateful to them. And I think that we appreciate being grateful to other people if we'll allow ourselves to do it. And so I think that that's even more true with God. I believe that God also remembers and appreciates the grateful person. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?